All item 79. AJR 17, clerk will read. Assembly Joint Resolution 17 by Assembly Member Solorio relative to law enforcement programs. Mr. Solorio. Thank you, Madam Speaker and members. I know having been the past chair of the Public Safety Committee that nearly every year we've asked the federal government to fully fund the cost that California incurs for incarcerating undocumented criminals. And I did not want this year uh, to finish without us requesting full reimbursement through what's called the State Criminal Alien Assistance Program, also known as SCAP. However, in researching this issue, I also found that there were numerous other public safety federal programs that we were not getting a good amount of funding for, and we need to be more aggressive in seeking for those federal funds. The U.S. Bureau of Justice Assistance administers various law enforcement initiatives that are carried out in partnership with local law enforcement officers. Currently, for example, California receives federal funding for some of these programs, such as the Bulletproof Vest Partnership Program, the Prescription Drug Monitoring Program, the Project Safe Neighborhood Program, and the SCAP. However, we don't receive full funding for the incarceration of, of undocumented criminals, and for these other grant programs, we're receiving about 18 percent less. Uh, members, both uh, Democrats and Republicans, I think it's very important for us to join together uh, in asking the federal government to fully reimburse us for those, um, for the incarceration of undocumented criminals, as well as more funding for all those good other anti-crime programs, and we need to support our law enforcement officers. Members, I ask for an I vote. Mr. Donnelly. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Members, um, I rise in support of AJR1. Um, it's really exciting to see the bipartisanship on this issue. This is critical that we recognize, especially given the Supreme Court's decision, that the, there is a tremendous cost to ignoring illegal immigration, and we are paying for it in our prisons where we pay $53,263 per inmate. That's money we could be spending giving tax credits to businesses. It's money we could be spending taking care of our schools, our public safety, all these other things. It is critically important. And yet I find myself troubled. I find myself wondering what it is that we're doing it's exciting, it's great, I'm glad to see that my colleagues on the other side of the aisle will not pass up the opportunity to collect federal funds, but what about getting at the root cause? Why don't we actually address the incentives that we have built in that cause people to come to this country illegally? But we're not doing that. We're passing measures like we did last week to give $42 million so that people will come here because we're gonna pay for your college education. And I think that at this time, that is a big mistake. I think it is, it is absolutely. Mr. Cedillo? Yes, yeah, not speaking to the bill. Thank you. Pardon? I couldn't hear. I couldn't hear you. What's your point of order? Speaker and colleague is not addressing the bill. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Donnelly, oh, you can. Okay, I'll, some, I, I'll, I will get bill. right back on track with the bill. Uh, Madam Speaker, permission to use a prop? Denied. <laughs> okay. No, nobody's been allowed to use a prop today. Okay, well, Both for, sides at least we're being aisle. consistent. Okay, I will, not, I will not lift up the prop, but it's this big. I held a press release and a press conference back in March, and it is a bill for, it is a bill for exactly and you can read it right in AJR 1, which is essentially what AJR 17 is, and it says, President Obama, please give us $885,000 for the cost of incarcerating people in the country illegally. And of course, he gives us 11 cents on the dollar. And so I think it is important, if we're going to ask for the funds, Let's not turn around and create incentives for more people to come here illegally, thence more people winding up incarcerated, thence driving up the costs of this whole problem. I encourage my colleagues on the other side of the aisle. I invite them to become, truly become part of the solution. We talk about bipartisanship. I know 
that every one of you recognizes that this, there's a tremendous cost. We've codified it here in our prison system, and this is a cost brought on by illegal immigration. It is brought on because we tolerate this. What about the cost to our schools? What about the cost to our hospitals? It's estimated from 11 to $22 billion. I would encourage every member of the other side of the aisle to stand and join with me in addressing those issues by not creating more incentives in laws that will create more illegal immigration, that will wind up with more criminal aliens incarcerated at our expense. And the last thing I'll say, in light of the Supreme Court's decision demanding that we release 33,000 to 43,000 criminals, I would also ask that we take an amendment on this AJR, if it's possible, and submit it to President Obama and say, President Obama, would you take the criminal aliens into custody, get them off our books, so that it's that many fewer criminals we have to release? I urge and I vote, and I commend the author. Mr. Hagman. Thank you, Madam Speaker and members. I do also rise to support AJR 1 and its merits. We do need to go with our fiscal times we have here in, in Sacramento, and, and if our budget's tight, we need, need to get our money back from the federal government. They are not performing their job, and we need to go after those funds. I request your eye vote. Mr. Knight. Thank you, Madam Speaker and members. I, too, rise to uh, support AJR 1. I think that uh, you know, we should do this every year until this, uh, this uh, discrepancy has been cleared up. We should urge Congress to help us out. We have a major problem, just like all the border states do. I urge and I vote. Mr. Alejo. Madam Speaker and members, I rise in support of this resolution. It's not the first time that this res resolution has been debated on this floor. It's been done on previous occasions, previous sessions. But this version separates the politics from the policy issue that's before us. The Latino Caucus asks for your I vote on this bill. Mr. Nielsen. Mr. Logue. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I, too, rise for AJR 1. I think it's an excellent bill, and I want to commend uh, Assemblyman Donnelly and uh, the author also for the bill, and I support it wholeheartedly. Thank you. Mr. Morell. Madam Speaker, may I uh, ask the author a question? Without objection. Yeah, Mr. Solario, can you help me work through, for the record, how you came up with this language, please? Sure. You know, I uh, chaired the Public Safety Committee for three years. So since then, I've tracked the type of federal funding available for public safety. Clearly, one important area is the SCAP program. We have not been receiving full funding for that. But there are many other good public safety programs funded by the federal government. We need to be equally aggressive in getting full funding for those programs. And I mentioned some of the programs that we're receiving. We've also received about a 18 percent cut in those programs. And we need to be aggressive across the board uh, in protecting, you know, residents throughout our state. Mr. Nielsen. Madam Speaker, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is a, a good bill. It's a good bipartisan bill. It's a bill that could have been carried by Assemblyman Donnelly, but his bill was held this bill moves. A Republican can carry a bill that's bipartisan just as well as a Democrat. Now this bill, is, the idea has been around and pursued for literally decades in California to reach our fair share and even our congressional delegation over the decades has not been able to deliver on our entreaties, our California delegation, to have full funding. The federal government is not much better at taking care of California and its debts to our state than the state of California is to local government. And that's historically been very disappointing. It does not mean, though, that we should not keep up the good fight. I would observe the federal government does not even want to incarcerate these foreign-born felons as they should under immigration law that I worked on in 1996, where I requested and achieved a provision that said if you are a formally deported felon illegally re-entering the United States, you could receive up to a 15-year federal term, but thereafter, federal U.S. attorneys chose not to prosecute these individuals. I would only then assume, having met with these U.S. attorneys and had some strong words with them about their failure to prosecute, they didn't want to. They did not want to be bothered. They did not want to have them occupying beds in federal prisons. 
But therefore, the whole intent of that provision in federal law was lost, as with it was justice. We would hope if we continue, ladies and gentlemen, to express our sentiments, the state of California, about the federal government meeting its obligation to pay for this incarceration, then we would all be better off. This is a good I vote. Ms. Grove. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I, too, rise in support of AJR 1 and thank the author, Mr. Donnelly, for um, carrying that and Mr. Solorio for you combining that information or the, the language with Mr. Donnelly's bill to make this bill go forward. And I support the bill. Dr. Halderman. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I wish to commend the author of AJR 1. I very much appreciate the willingness of the Latino Legislative Caucus to work with Mr. Donnelly. I think this bipartisan collaboration shows a great deal of comedy with this House. In fact, when I have difficult legislation that I'm not sure I'm going to, how I'm going to go on, what I think is, what if my favorite person on my side of the aisle were carrying the legislation? How would I judge it? And for that reason, I'm absolutely delighted that the members of this House were able to see past the issue of personality, even past politics, and just look at good policy. I appreciate Mr. Solario's role in this drama. Thank you. Mr. Silva. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I, too, would like to uh, congratulate uh, my colleague, Mr. Solario, on uh, AJ uh, R17. Being in local government for the last 24 years, um, we had to pay bills uh, that were not fair. The federal government continues to uh, deny it. We can't even get a good hearing in court. Mr. Saloria, thank you very much. And I'd also like to thank my colleague, Mr. Donnelly, for AJR 1. You've tried. Um, your heart is in the right direction, and I think that now is the time that maybe we can all work together and, and try and make California a better state. Thank you both. Mr. Nestende. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I rise in support of the resolution. And I must say, though, things are getting quite petty around here. To have to take somebody else's bill to reintroduce it is just getting petty. The been here three years. I haven't heard as many points of order and those three years until, or that I've heard in the last day or two, we're growing very intolerant here. I thought we were for tolerance, particularly the other party. We have points of order. We can't use props. Is speech, free speech really that bad? Just let people say their piece. Don't get too upset. Argue back if you don't like it. But I just hope we show a little less pettiness going forward in this house. Thank you. Ms. Torres. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I also want to thank Assemblymember Solorio. While many of us have great bill ideas, it takes a great author to bring people together and to find compromise. So I want to thank you for that, and I want to ask this body to support this great AJR. Seeing no further questions or debate, clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote.